Hello all. New day, new question. Today's question is how do I connect my business central in VS Code? I mean especially business central SaaS from VS Code. So let's talk about it. Let's see what's possible, what's not possible, what you should be doing, what you should not be doing as a developer. So before we get into it, let's have a quickly look on two broadly different type of environments that we have. So if you are on Business Central SaaS, you have a production environment and you have one or more sandbox environments. Uh, by default, you get one production environment, but uh, there's a way where you can pay and buy new production environment and have additional capacity. But broadly, there are two types of it. One is type of production and another is type of sandbox. Now, there are certain things that you can do uh, in the SaaS environment based on the environment type, and there are certain things that you cannot do based on, again, on the environment type. So let's get into it. First thing, you cannot connect your production environment for development purposes to your Visual Studio code. Let it be very clear. You will not be able to connect your production environment to Visual Studio Code for development purposes. You can't download symbols against it. You know, you can't. And let's try that out. There's a lot of talking, I guess, that I'm doing. So let's get back to VS Code and let's create an empty project. Let's do a AL Go, Project 3. And I'll have to zoom this in, I guess. So let me zoom this in. So as you connect to the production, uh, your VS Code, you see this window, which always says Microsoft Cloud Sandboxes. It never says production. It doesn't say Microsoft Cloud Environment. It says very specifically Microsoft Cloud Sandbox Environment. So let's even let's try that. Can we do that or not? So as soon as you do that, uh, it shows you this pop-up. We'll come to this in a while, but let's cancel this. It'll take you to your launch.json where there are some parameters, environment type, environment name. So first, let's look at it. it specifies which environment you use to connect to with the center. Now let's remove sandbox and see what options are there. Oh, there is on-prem, sandbox, and production. Hmm. Let's see what production does. What is the environment name? My production environment name is production. If I'm not wrong, production. And let's try to download the symbols against this environment. Download symbols. When I try doing that, and if it is not cached, my credentials are not cached in my environment, I'll get this pop-up and I'll say copy and open. When I do that, It'll take me to the browser when I need to paste that code, which I got, and hit next. This is a way to authenticate that you are allowed to check your permissions to connect to this environment. Do you have permissions to download symbols and so on and so forth? So that's needed. So when I click on continue, I get this message. You are signed in. On your device, you can close this window. Close this. And let's go back to VS Code to see what's happening here. So if you see, it says authenticating. When I was done with it, it says authenticated. It shows my username and credentials are cached. And then it is targeting the business central environment and it's just trying to send the request to download the symbols from the production environment and see what happened. It says a error occurred while processing this request. Request ID is this, as an ID is this. If you're targeting cloud instance, make sure these parameters are correct or not and correct and all but in summary you don't got any symbols out of it so remember this you'll not be able to even download symbols from production environment while you're trying to develop an app from your VS code let's connect to the sandbox and see what happens but then that environment type will become my sandbox and my environment name is also sandbox. One of my environment name of sandbox is sandbox. 
because as I said earlier, my credentials are cached. So when I now try to do the sound boot symbol, I don't have to authenticate myself. It'll understand and it'll use the same connection to download symbols from the sandbox to my PS4, which started happening. If you see here, this folder got created and symbols are still downloaded. So that's the first part of it, that you can connect to a sandbox environment to your VS code. But let's assume, as I was, as I've created some of other environments, sandbox environment for demo purpose, I have this sandbox environment called VC Open Discussion. What happens if I would like to build this app? The symbols will be same because all my environment are on the same version. But if I would like to deploy this app from here and we'll come to it, what are the right ways or not, to my BC sandbox. So I'll be playing between my sandbox and BC sandbox. So I don't want to change this parameter every time. So what I can do is I can come here and there's a button called add configuration. When you click on it, it gives you a list of different configuration that you can add. If you would like to understand what other options are, drop a comment and we'll talk about it. But let's choose publish to Microsoft Cloud Sandbox. And what you'll see is a new uh, configuration will get added. And this time what I'll do is I'll change the name to PC Open Discussion. And just for my clarity, I'll say the name of this is PC Open Discussion Microsoft Cloud Sandbox. And this is my Sandbox Cloud Sandbox. Now what happens with this is while I'm trying to download symbol or when I'm trying to deploy the app, the system will pop up and say which environment you would like to connect. Or even if you have a Docker environment or an on-prem environment where you're doing actively developing and testing on these different environment, you can also add a configuration and say, this time publish to your own server and say, what is your server? I'll say, this is my local dev or docker dev and I'll say okay I'm a local dev environment because I don't have a docker right now because of the new machine I'll set it up uh, local host 8080 the service is called vc210 uh, the authentication in this case that I have is windows so now I have three configuration one for local dev one for BC Open Discussion Sandbox and one for Sandbox. So when I'll try to do a download symbol and let's try doing that, it'll ask me which of these three configuration you'd like to choose when you're trying to do this action. You can either do it on local dev, you can either do it on BC Open Discussion or you can either do it on Sandbox. Now let's come back to one more thing before we talk about the publishing thing and all. If you are a developer or a partner where you are actively doing a development and you work with different customers and everybody has their own tenant and tenant IDs, this is your tenant ID. If you don't know it of a customer, you can just copy this and in these configuration, as an I don't know when you'll need it, but let's assume if you need it because there can be scenarios where uh, when you have different customers that are on uh, SAS and you would like to make sure that you are pointing to the right environment, what you can do is there is a parameter which is available called tenant. And here I can say this is my tenant. This takes me there to that particular tenant. So you can also specify that. So if these are two different environments which are from different tenant, there will be a different tenant ID here and that will work as it is. It'll remember this. The only thing you need to remember that it can only remember your last saved credentials. So if you are switching your environment, make sure that you do a control shift P, clear credential cache. When you do clear credential cache, 
it will clear whatever the credential that was stored in your environment now when i try to do again a download symbol and let's say it's time pointing to bc open discussion it'll say authenticate because i have nothing on my uh, cache that i can use so i'll go and click copy and open and again take me to the browser ask me to replace the code click next and that will authenticate or cache that username or password on my local ps code so that i get connected to it and if the versions are different of this environment than the previous environment it will download the symbols or real packages or sorry symbols for the base app or my dependent app if there are any into my VS code if they are same which seems to be same it'll just overwrite them you'll not even notice them that they got overwritten but in a while it get completed now last part of this video is about publishing now as you cannot connect to the production environment you can't publish from VS code that's very clear you'll have to build the app the best or the right or the suggested way is to use the CI CD pipeline on either on your uh, Azure DevOps or GitHub. Get the app from there and deploy it on your production environment. Or at least build the app locally and then deploy it. The suggested way is to use the DevOps or GitHub to generate your app using CI CD and then deploy it. But during your development, while you're developing something and you have a dev sandbox which you're working on, you can actually deploy on a sandbox environment directly. So what I'll do is I'll, hopefully I'll be able to do this. So let's try to publish this. For that, I'll do a publish, which is control F5. And then I'll say, I want to deploy this, which is a hello world app on my sandbox. So once I do that, this will authenticate which already the credential are synced and it'll connect to that it'll verify are the objects are free that you are have created are there any existing objects or not and it'll deploy that and open your business central based on whatever is set on the startup object id in your launch.json if I'm not wrong, recently Microsoft also added one more property called startup object type, which can be a page, report, query, or table. So now you can define what objects, not just the page, which object you would like to run when you do a publish from your VS Code. You can even run a report, query, or a table. That's one thing. If you have to do that, there is one more thing, which is startup company name which is also recently added. This let you choose the company here, the name of the company that will get popped up when this uh, deployment happens on your business central environment. So you have three properties, a startup object type, startup company, and a startup object ID. Coming back here, the app got published, which is not my intention. Everybody knows how that get published. What I wanted to show you is here, when you get into extension management page, see the difference between this app and this app. And let's just, yeah, I guess I have one more app like this, so I'll keep it as it is. And we'll see, we'll, yeah, let's do one more thing. Mm, let's go to VS Code. And this time what I'll do is I'll change the name of the app and I'll say AL Project 4. And just, oh, no. Okay, let's leave it. I guess what I'm trying to explain is what happens when you do a publish from your VS Code, your extension get published as dev. The only thing that you need to remember, and this because you can only deploy on sandbox, 
the only thing you need to remember that all the apps that you have in your sandbox environment which are tagged as deb dev they will automatically get removed during minor upgrades or major upgrades so whenever there is a new cumulative update from microsoft which get applied to your sandbox all your dev type of extension will be removed if there are table involves the data will be there behind the scene but you will not be able to see that app in your environment so if some fine day you wake up in the morning and you don't see your app deployed on your sandbox think about how you published it and that's why i'm saying never even on sandbox environment if it is not for the development purposes that sandbox never try to deploy apps from your vs code because there are two major problem one that app will get removed as the cumulative update or the major update happens the second your team is not aware about the changes that you are doing for that customer because you are not utilizing the azure devops or github to make your changes aware to other developers in your company so it's always best practice to get your app from your uh, ci cd pipelines in azure devops or uh, github uh, if there is a need which we as a company typically don't do direct publish to vs code if there is a need which maybe we haven't seen remember this that your dev extensions will get removed during the upgrades from microsoft so to summarize what we learned you cannot publish or even connect to your production environment for doing active development via your vs code you can only connect to your production environment oh sorry sandbox environment uh, through your vs code in the vs code if you have multiple environment which you are working at the same time you can always add multiple configurations into your vs code and then choose them during download symbol or publishing an app and so on and so forth what other thing we learned that there are three properties which are very important which defines what company what object type and what object id will run when you publish the app to your sandbox from vs code which is startup object id startup object type and the startup company name if you are a developer who is working on multiple customers who are on saas you can also specify tenant id in there last but not least uh, sorry second last your credential are cached in your vs code so if you are changing the customer or changing the tenant where you are trying to connect to you should be doing clear credential cache and last but not least is all the extensions published from vs code to sandbox environment will automatically be removed with the major or minor updates hope that clarifies the question who's over had it and this is saurabh dhani signing off do share the video if you think this is useful and please do subscribe to the channel and i'll see you next day with the next question that i receive somewhere thank you